So Joy, you have the Wait, Cole never Yantif, Shana Tova. We are so, uh, so excited to be together, actually close together. We can feel each other's presence here in our sacred space. Now 10 days into our new year, we have the opportunity to be together, to step into everything that is the promise of Yom Kippur. Ultimately, Everything that is the promise of Yom Kippur is a choice that we make. We can choose to step into it, to open ourselves to it, to let it turn us as we turn with it, or not. But the opportunity is nothing less than the expansion of who we are of our spirits, of our hearts, of opening ourselves to the best of who we were meant to be. That's what we speak of when we speak of teshuva, of return, of returning, not to something that's already been, but something that's been there all along that we have yet to awaken. And this day, 10 days into everything that is new, everything is there for us to take hold of. Perhaps you have been to this Kol Nidre alternative service before. If you have, you know that the environment that we try to create in this service is a little bit different than the environment that happens in our large sanctuary. Everything in the large sanctuary is about awe and grandeur, which certainly is fitting for the days of awe. Everything in this space is about proximity, intimacy, feeling, connectivity. But it only works if you open yourself to it. No one sits in judgment in this space all of us, in particular on Yom Kippur, sit as one together. So whatever you're bringing with you, this Kol Nidre, we invite you to feel that, hold it. Hold it in a way that lets others around you support you as you go. Open your heart to what is possible here. We think you'll be happy that you did. 
We hope you'll join us in song, in prayer, in conversation, in reflection. And we hope all of that will inspire you to continue over the course of the next 24 hours in conversation, in reflection, in meaning, in apology, in forgiveness with those you love. If you find yourself in the prayer book and it's speaking to you, that is excellent. If you find yourself in the prayer book and it is not speaking to you, that is not a problem. Believe me, <laughs> it's not a script. It's simply there to invite you into something deeper. Whatever calls you this night, let that be the voice that guides you. We journey together. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. We return. We return. We return, return again. We return, we return, we return, we return, we return, return again and again to love. melody is an opportunity for us to sing together, invite you to find your voices. I see some people thumbing through the book, maybe looking for the words. <laughs> They're not in the book. They're all around <laughs> you. Sing back. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return again. We return, we return, we return, we return, return again and again to love, to love. years ago, actor and comedian Steve Martin wrote a piece in the New Yorker about his final meeting with his father, with whom he held a lifelong antagonistic relationship. Martin recalled that after he won his first Emmy Award, his father growled in response, well, he's no Charlie Chaplin. But Martin goes on to describe a watershed moment of reconciliation as his father lay on his deathbed. I walked into the bedroom where he lay, his mind alert but his body failing. I stood at the end of the bed and we looked into each other's eyes for a long, unbroken time. At last he said, you did everything I wanted to do. I said, I did it because of you. It was the truth. I sat on the edge of the bed. Another silence fell over us. Then he said, I wish I could cry. I wish I could cry. At first, I took this as a comment on his plight. But I am forever thankful that I pushed on. What do you want to cry about, Dad? I finally said. 
for all the love I received and couldn't return. He had kept this secret, his desire to love his family from me and from my mother his whole life. It was as though an early misstep had kept us forever out of stride. Now, two days from his death, our pace was aligning and we were able to speak. I sometimes think of our relationship graphically as a bell curve. In my infancy, we were perfectly close. Then the gap widened to accommodate our differences and indifference. In the final days of his life, we again became perfectly close. Above all things, Perhaps the ultimate purpose of these days of awe is to bring us all to the edge of the precipice between life and death in order to create the emotional conditions necessary for urgent expression. If Rosh Hashanah is Yom Harat HaOlam, the day the world is born, then Yom Kippur is nothing less than the imagined enacting of our end a rehearsal of the end of our lives, to catalyze us to say what we need to say before it is too late. The Yomim Noraim are our time to refuse that everything be closed within us as long as we live, to speak courageously and vulnerable, vulnerably, let nothing go unspoken, offering ourselves without reserve. May our imagined crossing of this bridge help us to liberate whatever is closed in us and say it all as if the moment will never come again. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return. 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 We return. We return. Return again and again to love, to love, to love, to love. Turn again to love. We return again to love. Rabbi Lazer survived the death camps and returned to his hometown, Chestakov, Poland. For years following the Shoah, he roamed the streets playing a hand organ. At regular intervals, amid the numerous tunes he played, he would intentionally play Kol Nidre. As he did so, he would look into the eyes of the children who walked by, looking for a hint of recognition. 
In this way, he was able to bring many children back in contact with their people. For us, too, Kol Nidre is a moment of recognition, a sound that brings us back. We invite you to take a few moments in meditation and reflection. You can simply be, you can simply breathe. If you'd like to be in the words of the prayer book, we'd invite you to be on pages 15 through 17 for inspiration. Page 18, if you're feeling able, we'd invite you to please rise.
Shevikim Shevitim Petelin Um Brutalin La Sherim Vela Page 22, we continue with Barahu. Page 25, let's join together. Day and night are yours, creative spirit of the universe, the muted colors of twilight, the radiance of dawn. Yours are the spreading wings of light, the deepening shadows of darkness, an ever-changing drama. In the human heart, too, the struggle between darkness and light unfolds. From sunlit heights of generosity, the human heart sinks to the gloomy depths of selfishness. Although we fall, you give us the strength to rise again. You call on those who hurt through word or deed to break free from wrongdoing and return to you. All who hear your call to goodness are embraced. All who reject emptiness and evil find acceptance from you. We come into your presence this night of Kol Nidre, aware that our shortcomings and weaknesses are many, yet encouraged by your promise of forgiveness, we choose freely the path of repentance, restoring wholeness to our lives and holiness to the world. Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravim. In our oneness, our oneness that is not just about us, but is about everything. All of us connected in space, in time, with and through God. The words of Shema, page 28. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Please be seated. Page 31. 
Listen, all you who wrestle with your fate, the intimate and the infinite are one. Trust that unity with your whole heart, doubt and all, with your whole soul and with all the powers at your command. Remember it, repeat it everywhere, working or resting, sitting or walking, night and morning, alone and to all you love. See it written on your hand, on your brow, in every commonplace, and in every face. 41. For every exile who walked out of Egypt between walls of water, for everyone who remembered the feel of sea bottom underfoot, the sibilant roar of water rearing on the right, on the left, Someone forgot, someone scanning the dry horizon for a well or already mourning the musky smell of autumn in her father's fig trees, forgot the hosannas and by the bitter waves of Mara forgot the flash of dancing feet, the shimmer of timbrels. For every proselyte at Sinai, someone never heard of horns at all. Someone turned back from the mountain to bank the fire, feed the baby, steal a secret moment with another. Revelation begins in attention. While the elders trembled before the word of God flowing down the scorched north flank of Sinai, someone, rising from a last song, a last long embrace, gazed into the rapt face of the beloved and saw that it was good. Micha Mocha, page 40. Micha Mocha, Barili Madonai. Micha Mocha, Nedar Bakodesh. Nora Tehilo Dose. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom Vehamidenu Malkeinu Lechaim Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom Vehamidenu Malkeinu Lechaim Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu As 
we move toward Amidah, which begins on page 46 and really takes us through the central most part of our worship together, not just tonight, but really any time we come together as a Jewish community to pray, we might take to heart the idea that the center of this prayer ultimately invites us to stand, sure physically, but it's called the Amidah because its contents relaying all the most important values of our tradition, of our faith, connecting us to our history, telling us of our relationship with God, inviting us to make the ordinary extraordinary through all of its focus on holiness, invites us to remember that you can't do those things just sitting down. It requires presence, it requires posture, it requires openness of mind, of body. And isn't that the truth for anything that we pray? Anything that we hope will begin in our hearts but make its way out into the world. So as we move toward Amidah, standing before God as it says in our Machzor, Let's invite that awareness into our consciousness. Whatever it is for which we pray this night, the words we sing, the prayers held deep within our hearts, let's commit to standing in them, to being in their presence, and then to doing what it takes to make that real in the world after our prayer concludes. 46, if you're able and when you're ready, I'd invite you to rise. Ana na 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 ufi agid ufi agid hila teha Ana na 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 Adonai Ana na 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 spatai tifta Ana na 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 ufi agid Agi <laughs> Elohim 
מהלך עוזר ומושיח ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם לעזרה קצרה אתה גיבוי לעולם אדוני מחייה הכל אתה רב להושיע מוריד הטל מכלכל חיים בחסד מחיה הכל ברחמים רבים סומך נופלים ורופא חולים ומתיר אסורים ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר מי כמוה בעל גבורות ומידו מלך מלך ממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישוע מי כמוך אל הרחמים זוכר יצוריו לחיים ברחמים ונאמן אתה לך חיות הכל ברוך אתה אדוני לחיי הכל We return, we return, we return, we return, return again. We return, we return, we return, we return, we return, return. to truth to true 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 we return The sages and the prophets did not yearn for the messianic time in order to have dominion over the entire world, to rule over the Gentiles, to be exal exalted by the nations, or to eat, drink, and celebrate. Rather, they desired to be free from oppression or disturbance so that they might immerse themselves in Torah and wisdom and thus merit the world to come. In that era, there will be neither famine nor war, envy nor competition, for goodness will flow in abundance and all delights will be freely available as dust of the earth. The entire world will be occupied solely in seeking to know God. As scripture says, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of God as water covers the sea. So let this be my prayer for personal redemption, uninterrupted time to breathe and think, time to ask myself the purpose of all my frantic striving, time to bask in the radiance of what is on 64. Zochreinu Adonai Eloheinu bo letova, amen. Ufokdeinu bo livracha, amen. Vahoshienu bo lechaim, 
Amen. Eternal God, remember us. Amen. Be mindful of us. Amen. And redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Amen. 72. Ritze Adonai Eloheinu Be'am Ha Yisrael Utefilatam Be'achava Tikabel Utehile Ratzon Tamida Bodat Yisrael Israel Ameha El Karob Leho Kora Hapenein Abodeha Bechoneinu Shpok Ruha Aleinu Viteh Zena Eineinu As we move forward to our prayers for Shalom, our prayers for great Shalom, Shalom Rav, which you can find on 78. We might consider that this word Shalom, which most of us know as peace, shares the same root as the word for wholeness, Shalom. But what you might not know is that word shalem appears in our biblical text, the Tanakh, the entire corpus of our biblical literature, only once. And it occurs in the story of Jacob wrestling with an angel or a man or his brother, whomever it might be, in the middle of the night in this very strange encounter. And you know the story perhaps from childhood. Jacob ends up surviving the night, but he doesn't walk away untouched, unharmed. His hip is wrenched out of its socket, and he limps for the rest of his life. And it's only there that he's described as whole. Shalem. There's something to the truth of our brokenness, of the wounds we bear, of our yearning, in the places where we find ourselves less than perfect, that Jewish tradition invites us understand, to understand as the avenue to not just peace, but wholeness. And perhaps that's one of the main frames we might enter into on Yom Kippur in particular. Why go through all of this exercise if we take it seriously of thinking about the places where we've harmed, where we've been harmed, all the places that take us out of the myth of perfection, many of us like to carry with us all the time. 
that certainly our society likes us to believe is a possibility, which it isn't, it's a lie. The only truth of all humanity is that we share a common experience that we lose. We lose the things we love. We lose our way. But we have the opportunity to find a new way together to find new discoveries from what we've lost. And in the process, maybe find ourselves whole. Maybe access a peace we couldn't have otherwise imagined. Shalom Rav, again, 78. Shalom Rav, al Yisrael amcha tasim leolam. Shalom Rav, al Yisrael amcha tasim. Atahu melech adom Lehol ha-shalom Ki atahu melech adom Lehol ha-shalom Letov b'inecha Levarech et amcha Yisrael Becholet Ubechol shahar Tishlomecha Baruch Ata Adonai Oseh Shalom invite you to close your machzareem for a few minutes. Hopefully you received a text sheet when you came in. If you didn't, probably someone next to you might have that. As you hopefully know, uh, this service, one of the unique features, I guess, of this service is that rather than uh, there being a sermon or some sort of formal frontal presentation, uh, we get to have a conversation together, an opportunity to study and share, uh, reflect, and hopefully grow as a community together. So before we begin, I just want to invite you to call into your mind's eye yourself 10 years ago. Some of you are like, ooh, <laughs> and some of you are like, ooh. <laughs> Just try to get a picture of yourself. Think of the music you listened to, what you watched on television, what life was like. Maybe you still went to the movies. There were still, like, theaters and movies and things like that. Think about what the family around you was like, the friends around you were like. Think about who was there that's not here any longer. Now, some of you aren't yet 20 years old in this space, but for those who are, take yourself back 20 years. Reintroduce yourself to that person. Got him? That's a great exercise you can do any time, by the way, and however old you are, you can keep going, and usually it takes you in a pretty fun direction. How similar are you today to the person you were 10 years ago? Raise your hand if you're like, I'm the same person. Right, nobody. Good. 
Raise your hand if you're like, I, I recognize that person. I, I'm similar to that person 10 years ago. Right, right? I still see myself in that person. And I mean, I guess in the spirit of the exercise, like raise your hand if you're like, I don't, I'm nothing like that person. I'm completely transformed in the decade. Congratulations, that's impressive, <laughs> right? Easier to do usually with a 20 year span. Depending how old you are, if you really, you know, go back the 30 years or the 40 years, it really starts to become a pretty dramatic difference, right? We as human beings, are actively changing all the time, not just in measurements of decades, but the truth is in measurements of moments, physiologically, first of all, no less emotionally, spiritually, in our relationships, in our world. So come with me into this journey of transformation. And I just want to begin with a framing from Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. I'm going to just read for you the first two lines and the last one um, for the sake of time. To claim to be what I am not is a pretension. To insist that I must be only what I am now is a restriction which human nature must abhor. The choice is made moment to moment. There is no standing still. What does it mean to claim to be what I am not is a pretension? What does that mean? And these are not um, rhetorical questions. This is where we talk. <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah, Dave. Well, it would be the first thing to me if I were to claim I was a rabbi and then I have to really pretend to still be as I'm not. Okay, so if you were to claim, and this, Dave has used the example of rabbi, but it could be, you know, whatever it is that you're not, pick, a, pick an occupation, then that's, that's a pretentious thing to claim because it's not the truth. What else is it? Why is it pretentious to claim to be what you are not? Okay, so and if you claim, it, if the implication is you're claiming to be perfect, then that certainly sounds pretentious. Other thoughts? Yeah? I mean, it, it, it's not truthful. So in that alone, the notion of something being untrue is a pretension. Yeah, Robert? Ah, okay. It denies you the opportunity to grow. Great. Upstairs, folks, just, I've got to, you know, move my neck to catch you. Just, I, if I, if, if for some reason I don't see you raising your hand, start to, like, yell or throw things, and I'll, 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 I'll notice. What does it mean to insist that I must be only what I am now as something that human nature must abhor? What's wrong with saying, I'm good? Like, B plus, I'm good. C plus, I'm good. My kids, one of my kids actually does that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you're only taking the part that is now, you're not seeing the fullness of the whole self. Yeah, Marissa, was your hand up? Yeah. Great. Yep. Great. So thank you for that. You're saying this is me and there's no room for something different. I, I just want to invite honest reflection and maybe we'll do this as a, a communal confessional and I'm just going to disclose that I do this all the time. Um, so y y perhaps you do too and you could join me in the confession. <laughs> when confronted in a way where someone is calling me out on a behavior that isn't pleasant, my instinctual response is, well, this is me. That's just who I am. This is what I do. No other, really? It's just me? Okay, at least a couple, I got a couple of folks. You don't ever play the this is me card? 
I'm, ho I'm hoping that a lot of you actually have played this card and you're just embarrassed to raise your hands to it. Um, if not, you're highly actualized people and this is amazing and Heschel would love you. Um, right, so, so this idea of, of the notion to, to claim that this is, this is who I am as something that we must abhor, right, is, is rooted in this notion, of course, that, that, that there's, a, there's a fullness to us that doesn't just extend back to whomever we've been, but also negates the possibility that we could change. We could be better. We could do something different. We could be more. We could grow. That seems like great. Does that feel like that feels good to me, conceptually? You know when it doesn't feel good? When I'm the one who is asked to change. Any hands to that? Okay. Yeah. Right? So, so the notion of us sort of, um, you know, often the external lens to somebody else is like a 2020 view. Uh, it's very clear that the other person should be changing and growing and evolving. Uh, but we, uh, in the position where we are, we, we might not apply the same sort of standards to ourselves. Um, but nevertheless, the invitation is one of continuous growth, the possibility of change. And that, as you see at the, at the end of Heschel's statement, the choice is made moment to moment, there is no standing still. And I just want to hold that. The choice is made moment to moment, meaning any moment I could choose not to play the that's who I am card. Any moment, that could be my choice. But there is no standing still. Time will move forward. We will live and we will die. And the choice of how we navigate that space, well, that's ours to make in every moment. But time will continue. There is no standing still. Just an interesting framework to think about, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I'll just, maybe some of you have read Daniel Kahneman's work. Um, really, really fascinating um, writing that he's done on any number of topics, but in particular, uh, his notion of, of memory and how we as people navigate with that. Um, if you come to that second text, I'm just going to read it for you briefly and then point out um, two, two key points. So Kahneman writes that there is an experiencing self who lives in the present and knows the present, but basically has only the present. And then there is the remembering self. And the remembering self is the one that keeps score and maintains the story of our life. Both of these selves are in each of us. We all contain them. Now the remembering self is a storyteller. What defines a story are changes, significant moments, and endings. Endings are very important. Now the experiencing self lives its life continuously. It has moments of experience one after the other. And you can ask, what happens to these moments? And for the experiencing self, not the remembering self, but for the experiencing self, the answer is really straightforward. They are lost forever. Think to yourself about when the experiencing self in you is more prominent, and think to yourself when the remembering self in you is more prominent. It's not a formulaic answer. Each of us plays with both of these selves in different ways, for all sorts of reasons, all the time. But the heart of the remembering self, which is the one I want to invite us into now, is the idea that life may go on and we can make choices moment to moment, but we are never actually detached from the moments that have come before and even the things and moments that will come after. We are part of a long, continuing trajectory and story. Which has everything to do with the invitation of teshuva, repentance. 
why we do it, and what it might offer for us. So come to Soloveitchik. It's the third text. We're going to skip the first paragraph. <laughs> but it's there for you, should you find this interesting, to carry with you in your machzor over the rest of Yom Kippur to look at in those moments when you... Uh, when you need something to distract you or perhaps take you in more deeply. In the second paragraph, it's the memory of sin that releases that power within the inner depths of the soul of the penitent to do greater things than ever before. A person who has sinned and has repented may be able, if they prove worthy, to utilize the dynamism of the forces of evil which had enveloped them before and elevate those forces, making them operate on behalf of the forces of good. I'm just going to stop there. Okay? So just take this in. It's not just saying that making teshuva is a good idea. It will make you feel better. You'll say sorry, and God willing, somebody will forgive you, and you'll be back to where you started. This suggests something very different. What does this suggest the value of teshuva is? Yeah, Ben. Great, yeah, we can use our past mistakes to learn from and get better in the future. The bar mitzvah seems to have been a good thing and <laughs> good, okay. It was a couple years ago, so come up, it's perfect, great. In what way can we get better in the future, or what does it say we can use? I mean, that, that's the part of this text which is, um, I, I don't want us to lose sight of. Look, look at the language. To utilize the dynamism, whatever that means, of the forces of evil, which had enveloped them before, and elevate those forces, making them operate on behalf of the forces of good. If we're doing, let's say we're doing the bad thing we do, uh, whatever the bad thing is that we do that we're needing to repent for. Um, let me think of the many bad things I do as, as an example. Um, oh, okay, so uh, to the point from before, I am very stubborn. And um, I can be passionately stubborn um, to, to the point that it is um, difficult to be around me. And um, I tend to double down in that space and to use um, conviction to stick to what I believe is the right opinion, which is always mine, <laughs> right? If we apply that to this text, what force is it that I can then use for the good? Is it my stubbornness? Good, yes. It's, it's, the, it's the passion. It's the conviction. It's the catalyzer underneath whatever this manifestation of the habit is. That in the, in the, if we're looking at things as sort of downward and upward, right? If a sin takes us down, then I drive myself down very, very far, very passionately. But I have the potential to then go the opposite way proportionately. What's the implication of that? Like, so what? What's so great about this idea? Yeah. Could you say a little more? The idea of redemption. Okay, so that you could take what was evil or negative or whatever it is and turn it into something good. Good. Yeah, Marissa? Good, a learning from it, using it in a positive way. Irene, was your hand up? Yeah. You can do it at any time. You can do it at any time. And I heard over 
coming. Was that from up there? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Regardless of the severity, it can be overcome. Yep. That you have a choice. It, uh, what sort of choice? Great. Yes. Great, I have the choice not to do the same thing again and make a better choice. Ellen, I'm coming, I see ya. <laughs> yeah, it's giving us control. Great, it's about perspective and we use the word manipulate, which I'll, I'll frame, which I believe you mean in a positive context, right? In this case, which is, well, this is the, the energy or the tool that we had ch used consciously or not to accomplish whatever negative thing it was. Therefore, we can choose to utilize it in a different direction. Yeah, John. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You don't actually have to learn a completely new skill set to do this because it's already in you. And you're actually really good at it already <laughs> because of how far down it's taken you. Serious, seriously, that's literally what this means. And because it's in you, it doesn't actually require years at a therapist, no offense to the therapist, to acquire new skills. It's in you. You already know how to do it. Karen, was your hand up? Great. Great. Beautiful. Um, these changes that you're making don't only benefit yourself, but they benefit those around you, potentially the world, whatever that means, in expanding circles of influence, something along those lines. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't actually, what it does is it doesn't make the sin part of you. What's part of you is actually the catalyzing energy that manifested itself one way or another. And that can be for the bad or that can be for the good. I just want to add one other level on that hasn't been spoken because that's really um, the key here to Soloveitchik's frame. And for those of you that study mindfulness with me, you might remember Soloveitchik's frame as opposed to Rob Cook, okay? So just there are a few of you around the room. So Soloveitchik teaches that if one practices teshuva, you can actually become a new person. Whereas Rob Cook teaches, no, you take it with you. You never really, you're never really fully new. Soloveitchik believes we can become fully new. And this text shows one of the ways how that can happen. So look at the last line. Last, well, it's, in, it's the last sentence. <laughs> By sinning, they, the repentant person, discovered new spiritual forces within their soul, a reservoir of energy, of stubbornness and possessiveness, whose existence they had not been aware of before they sinned. Because this was in them the whole time. Right? The passion, the stubbornness to really bring whatever their negative behavior was forward. But it took the process of teshuva to become aware because that's what the process demands, ultimate self-awareness. And if you do that, it allows you to then operate, go back to the sentence before, on behalf of the forces of good. The key in this text is this is about somebody who's done teshuva. So 
if it was a relationship where they owed the apology, they've done it. They've said sorry. We assume the relationship is better. The text begins after that to say, and what do you get with this new awareness of all this energy and passion you had that took you to a negative place? Well, not only did it resolve the situation you were in before, but now you can actually use these superpowers that you have found for the purpose of the good. You're no longer constrained by the story before. You can use your passion to make something better. You can use your energy to improve society, other relationships, your work, how you navigate in the world. Which is why it teaches in the Talmud, right below that, in the place where the repentant stand, even the fully righteous cannot. When's the first time peace or wholeness is said in the Torah, in Tanakh? When Jacob's hip is wrenched, when he learns pain. One who never sins can never be as righteous as one who sins and repents because the potential for what can be done elevates this person to an entirely different level. So what's the incentive for teshuva? Is it just for the sake of making relationships better? Is it just for the sake of me feeling like I don't have to carry my burdens on my shoulders so much? Is it just to release me? What's, for it, what's it for the sake of? The future. Exactly. It's for the sake of everything, everyone, Exactly, making an additional link in the chain. Thank you. So you might be familiar with the fact, and this is just the reference from the, the, the Talmudic Midrash about this, uh, but that our ancestors um, in the Ark of the Covenant, they carry not just the whole tablets of the Ten Commandments, but also the broken ones that are shattered right after the Ten Commandments and the golden calf episode happens. You know, Moses comes down the mountain, sees all the people sinning, gets really, really mad, and throws the tablets down. They crack. The people are punished and all that. And then Moses goes back up in the mountain. It's actually Yom Kippur when this happens and gets a whole new set of tablets that God dictates and Moses etches. It's like a covenantal model. Those tablets, those go in the ark. Everybody assumes that those other tablets, well, they just get left on the road. But they don't they get put in the ark too. Because our wholeness is deepened from our brokenness. We appreciate our goodness and our potential more when we carry a memory of our failings. This is how we transform into the humans we might one day be. That our tradition says we are meant to be all along. That's what we're praying we return to. So my prayers for myself and for all of us are that we might um, invite ourselves into awareness of the energies that underlie the places where we are less than perfect. And that we might see them as opportunities and vehicles, not just for restoring our relationships, but for actually becoming God's hands here on this earth, repairing our world. Our tradition says that's what we are asked to do because that potential is in us.
spirit of truth. We'll turn to page 82. We arrive at Vidui, the confessional section of our prayers. We'll sing together, beginning with Ashamnu. If you uh, have the tradition or like to practice it of taking your hand, either fist closed or hand open, to tap on your heart. If you were raised traditionally, you were likely raised to think that this was meant to hurt, sting a bit. Uh, but a, a, a friend of mine and a teacher, Alan Good, has taught me that uh, it can also mean to tap on your heart, to open it up. Mm to awareness. So pick your pleasure. I might alternate. <laughs> Can't ever fully get rid of the past. <laughs> Again, 82. Asham nu. Asham nu. Bagad nu. Bagad nu. Gazal nu. Gazal nu. Di bar nu dofi. Di bar nu dofi. Hevi nu. Hevi nu. Vehir shanu. Vehir shanu. Zahad nu. Zahad nu. Hamas nu. Hamas nu. Tafal nu shaker. Tafal nu shaker. Ya ahats nu ra. Ya ahats nu ra. Ki zahab nu. Ki zahab nu. Lahats nu. Lahats nu. Marahad nu. Marahad nu. Ni ats nu. Ni ats nu. Sarahar nu. Sarahar nu. Avi nu. Avi nu. Pashahanu, Pashahanu, Saraharnu, Saraharnu, Kishinu Orev, Kishinu Orev, Rashahanu, Rashahanu, Shihatnu, Shihatnu, Tiahavnu, Tiahavnu, Tainu, Tainu, Titanu. Let's move forward to 91. The middle of the page. Let's read together. Who among us is blameless? Who shall say, I have not erred, I have not wronged or sinned? We abuse, we brutalize, we covet, we deceive. We enslave, we feud, we gossip, we humiliate, we injure, we judge unfairly, we kill, we lie, we manipulate, we neglect, we ostracize, we plagiarize, we quarrel, we rage, we shame, we turn away, we undermine, we vilify, we waste, we exploit the earth, we yearn too much for yesterday and too easily forget Zion. Our sins are an alphabet of woe. Help us, Holy One, to follow your ways of integrity and justice and love. Teach us to seek forgiveness with humility and an open heart. Elo aslihot, slach lanu mechalanu, kapelanu. Ve'al kulam, elo aslihot, slach lanu mechalanu, slach lanu mechalanu. For all these wrongs, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. In our yearning for our own wholeness, our own healing, 
so too we yearn for the wholeness and healing of those we know and love, for wholeness and healing for our community, for our country, for our world. So we'll invite your prayers, your thoughts, your hearts to wrap around those in need of healing. If you are holding someone or perhaps many in your prayers this night of Kol Nidre, those in need of healing, healing of body, healing of mind, healing of spirit, if you'd like to say a name or names aloud, I'd invite you to do so as my hands come around the space. Rifainu Adonai v'nerape, Hoshienu v'niva sheva, El karov lechol korav, Ach karov lireav yisho. We pray for healing of the body, we pray for healing of the soul, and strain of flesh and mind and spirit. We pray to once again be whole. Shia et a mecha, Ura et a naha la teha, Ura aim vina se mata ola. Mishibera avotenu, Mishibera himotenu, Ana donai hoshia. We pray for healing of our people. We pray for healing of the land and peace for every race and nation, every child, every person, everyone. Oh, please heal us now. 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 A few moments.
moments for silent prayer and meditation. Tishma koli Reho ki sheli Hatishma koli Basher hincha Kol kore beoz Kol bohe bid me Man, mitzave bracha. Hatishma koli, rehoki sheli. Hatishma koli, basher hincha. Page 114, if you're feeling able, please rise. We'll join together in the English. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our families. Avinu Malkenu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkenu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and terror. Avinu Malkenu, enter our names in the book of lives well lived. Avinu Malkenu, renew for us a year of goodness. Avinu Malkenu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu Malkenu, let our eyes behold the dawn of redemption. Avinu Malkenu, we pray, do not turn us away from you with nothing. Avinu Malkenu, welcome our prayer with love, accept and embrace it. 
Avinu Malkenu, act towards us as befits your name. Avinu Malkenu, act for your sake, if not for ours. Avinu Malkenu, you alone are our sovereign. Avinu Malkenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice, treat us with tender compassion. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. Avinu Malkenu, Avinu Malkenu, Avinu Malkenu, Ponenu Vaanenu, Kien Banu Masi, Asei Manu, Sendaka Sixteen. Vaanachnu korim, umishtach avim umodim, lifnei melech, moche hamlachim, hakadosh baruch hu. Ne'emar v'haya Adonai, lemelech al kol ha'aretz, bayom ha'hu, bayom ha'hu, nihye. Ushemo, 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 Page one twenty two, we find Kadish Yatom, Mourner's Kaddish. Although we miss our loved ones who are no longer here with us on this earth all the time in particular in this season of remembrance, do we yearn for them? And so too might we feel them with us in remembering them with gratitude, which is the invitation of the words of Kaddish. We keep them with us. They live on in the way we remember them and in the way we live our lives in the spirit of the best ways that they lived theirs. That's how we make their memories blessings. We'll join together in the words of Kaddish. Again, 122. There is one little extra insertion on the high holidays in the words of Kaddish. So just if you're very used to saying it, just you'll catch on. You'll hear it, but you'll notice it in the prayer book as well. Let's join together. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei raba ba'alma divarach hirute v'yamlich malchute b'chaye chon v'yomechon chaye dechol beit Yisrael ba'agala v'izman kariv imru amen yehe shemei raba mevarach le'olam ulal meal maya yit barach v'yish tabach v'yit pa'ar v'yitromam v'yit nasei Vita dar, vita lev, vita lal, shemei dekut sha, brichu. Le'ela ul'ela, mikol birchata v'shirata, 
Tush bechata v'nechem ata, ta'amiran be'alma v'imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya v'chayim, aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru, amen. O se shalom v'imromav, hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'al ko yoshevei tevel, v'imru, amen. Zichronam livracha, may all of their memories be for blessings. We say together, Amen. Please be seated just for two more minutes. I think we did okay. <laughs> uh, so first, of course, words of gratitude to Alan, to Allison, and to Joey. Thank you all so much for being here and bringing your gifts and talents and enabling all of our prayers to join with yours and to soar. We are so grateful to you this night and always. Thank you. Thank you to our ushers and greeters who welcomed us all in uh, so easily and safely and beautifully. Thank you for taking time from your high holy days for yourselves personally and helping our congregants and our community uh, to feel welcomed and part of one big family that is NSCI. We are grateful to you. Um, and John and Susan, thank you for taking the opportunity to hold our Torahs. Uh, that was really lovely of you, and uh, thank you for letting us all be a part of that with you. A few just reminders for everyone. Um, Yom Kippur is not over, it's just starting. Uh, so <laughs> in case you didn't know that, um, we will continue tomorrow throughout the day. The service schedules are in the pamphlet you received when you came in. It's also in the High Holiday Catalog. Hopefully you got in the mail. Also on our website. Um, we have it set up so that if you want to stay all day, really you can. There's something to do at any point in time. If that's not what you want to do, you can easily jump in and out based on the schedule. The only place I would just want to draw your attention to is Ni'ila. That is an approximate time. So we go from 4.30 Yizker straight into Ni'ila. Um, we have it scheduled for 5.30, but I would just say if you are wanting to be there for Ni'ila, you might want to come a little bit before that if you're not planning on attending Yizker because we can't promise you exactly when it will start. Um, the other thing to just to know about that is um, we're excited for, we're always excited for Ni'ila, it's pretty awesome here, but in particular, it has been now uh, two high holiday seasons that we haven't been able to really be together in the way we like to be here all the time, but in particular as we really enter into the new year at Yom Kippur's end. Uh, and that is to say that everyone is invited actually up onto the bima in front of the open ark to close Yom Kippur, to close the gates, to enter into the new day as one. Um, so we just want you to be aware of that. That's not something you have to do, uh, but for anyone who has done it, people tend to think it's a highlight. Uh, so just want you to uh, be, be aware that that will happen uh, and will happen tomorrow at Ni'ila. If you have any questions about any of this, please ask me, ask any of our ushers or greeters. I noticed as I drove in today that the collection bins for Cradles to Crayons and for the ARCS food drive are low. Um, this is an immediate and relatively simple way that we here at NSCI can make an immediate difference in our local community. Um, and all it takes is stopping by the grocery store at some point before Sukkot's end to pick up some groceries, whether they be toiletries or non-perishable kosher food items, or even if you have in your home gently used children's supplies, clothes, toys, all of that's accepted in our collections and will help to make our community better. We say a lot about how we're one, we're all connected. The way we actually make that manifest is doing something about it. If we, don't, if we aren't compelled by the message of Yom Kippur to do that, then I don't really know when we will be. <laughs> so take the time. Probably you're gonna be at the grocery store in the next week as my guess, or using Instacart or whatever it might be. Make a little bit of an extra purchase. Go into your closet, take something out that is no longer needed, that's still in good condition. Connect yourself 
to another person help make our world more whole. Let's return. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return again. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return. We return again and again to love. To love. May we be inscribed and sealed in the book of life together. We return again to Nicely done, Joey. That was great. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. It was great. Yeah, yeah. That was good. How are you feeling? Do you want to just uh, pull down the mask? 